Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, here to usher you into the weekend. It is the uh, third weekend in May. We got a lot of those weekends for sure. We got five Wednesdays this month. Um, I wanted to mention um, Farmer's Market is going strong. If you haven't been out there and out and about, best times to do it is all every single Saturday until the end of October. Also, beginning in June, we're going to be doing the Out to Lunch. Also, uh, downtown tonight, those are the two equivalents of you know, going to Karis Park, having some food, listening to some music. Those are some great events that are happening uh, concurrently with our summer season where everyone's going to be going out and about. So let's jump right in and talk about some of the things that the city is doing because as uh, we get into it a little bit more with the city, uh, there's going to be a lot more construction, a lot more things getting uh, prepped and hopefully be ready by the uh, summer season for a lot of this stuff. So Mayor Davis spoke about the new owners of Montana Rail Link in terms of how they plan on passing through Missoula and how many folks are concerned about the noise from trains blowing the whistles while they travel through cities. And so the city vowed to invite reps from Burlington Northern Santa Fe in these regards to neighborhoods councils of Rattlesnake neighborhood leader leadership. This isn't something that is making headlines, but people have mentioned this in a, at, at a few of the city council meetings thus far. Another topic includes uh, Robert Knight for his efforts in the Five Valley Lands Trust, and the city gave him a proclamation for his own appreciation day for the 27th of May. Something that doesn't happen too often is the city de-annexing land back into the county. Bonner Milltown spoke about this on Monday, but we have Dave de Grand Prix, Office of Community Development, who gave us the rundown. The owner of Track 2 operates a bee business, so think honey, think beeswax, um, things like that, and would like to simply develop an agricultural building for storage. There's an office component as well, but it's largely um, an agricultural building. The owner of Track 3 only is, is talking about developing only um, potentially five large lots uh, or, or kind of family type residential, single family residential development. City Water and Sewer is located more than 1,500 feet from the tracks. And as it is right now, the city doesn't have fire flows, so the required pressure and volume to serve um, any new development off of the existing water line. So what that means is not only to, if, these pro if these properties were in city limits under city policy, would uh, an extension of the water line, more than 1,500 feet need to be made, water and sewer, but also um, there would also have to be significant upgrades to the water system to meet fire flow requirements. Yep. And one of the things about this and some fun fact history is that when they were annexing this, a lot of people, uh, even in Bonner, were mentioning uh, that there was uh, quite a, a storm of people who were very concerned about the annexation. But of course, this was back in 2009. Uh, many people uh, also believed that, you know, the, the dam and everything like that. A lot of folks in Bonner were very concerned about being annexed within the city limits. Um, and I can get that because a lot of rural Montana areas in the county are worried about being in, annexed by the city, which inc would in turn increase the tax base for the city, but then that would require the people in the county to pay for city. But because of these, um, the one thing that it didn't have was uh, enough water, water pressure for firefighters to plug in uh, so essentially you can't put in fire hydrants in that uh, area in which they weren't able to do it without any kind of major massive uh, incentive for infrastructure. Um, word pasta basically. But because of the city land use, developers would have to be required to develop a water sewer system that doesn't simply exist and therefore requested to de-annex the development. Uh, low land use priorities for, for lack of a better term. So uh, Joe Denart, uh, the IMAG developer in Missoula, spoke on what they want to do with this particular property that uh, the de-annexation request was for. You know, this, this process started three years ago when, when Bert originally reached out to the city for track two to um, see if he could build his, his uh, shop for his bee business. And it wasn't permitted, per, permitted in the then zoned R20. Um, and that's when I stepped in. I, I, I stepped in in 2022 and really I helped Bert get what truthfully was one of the fastest rezones pushed through. I think everybody saw, uh, you know, the um, checkbox elements of, of the rezone as, as a real hardship. And so we had to 
really actually reduced the density potential on the property twofold, going from R20 to R40, uh, which it's owned currently, just so we could be a permitted use for his ag business. And then, of course, fast forward another year, it's fall of last year, and we got the building permit package in, and then comes in the, the fire snack, which Dave did a really good job spelling out, you know, 1,500 foot away from the nearest main, and fire has really strict policies for what needs to be done um, for a parcel that's in the city. All right. And then we actually have word from, uh, wait, never mind. Uh, we, let's see. Oh, no, we'll, we'll have, we have actually do have word from the uh, person who owns the property. Um, where is he? Um, let's see. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought I had him in there, but um, never mind. Forget about it. Okay, most of the city council uh, meeting had to do with rezoning the university's answer to parking as the new residence hall proposal will affect a lot of the new parkings, a lot of the parking spots well into 2027 where they plan to wrap up construction that fall semester. So new dormitory, new residence hall, that kind of stuff. Uh, they're getting rid of some parking as a uh, result. They will be adding a sign um, in Jeanette Rankin Park of the University of Montana and so far this is kind of like a package deal and so John Sand, Associate Planner for the City, talks about this uh, follow-up from last week. This is a existing condition of Rankin Park um, right off of uh, the Madison Street Bridge where the monument sign is proposed um, and again these are some drawings and renderings of, of the proposed sign. Okay. And this is what you guys can expect to see in the Jeanette Rankin Park. But we're going to talk a little bit more about the actual uh, parking and the need for that kind of stuff. And one of the bigger undertakings is the removal of parking on the southwest side of the campus for construction and parking in areas fielded by uh, Barbara uh, Skisik with the university speaks on parking and what they plan on doing. This is we're taking away a lot of parking where the new residence hall is going. And so in order to provide parking for students, uh, to accommodate the new residence hall. This is a, an, in one way to give back so the students actually have somewhere to park is sort of the Miller Hall um, area. So, and then the other one that's outside of the UC, we are actually leaving a tennis court and three pickleball courts and a basketball court. So there is some community gathering spaces uh, being incorporated there as well. In addition, um, just a quick little comment on the landscaping piece too. We are actually putting in trees and shrubs and plants. Just the requirement being to replace like for like on mature trees is really where uh, the requirement isn't met. But there are certainly additional trees and shrubs and um, plants being added as far as the, uh, in addition to the parking lots. So. And you know, uh, construction is something that the University of Montana has done consistently. Every five years, it seems like they're building a whole brand new building. The Adams Center parking lot, uh, they reduced a, a substantial amount of parking to add their new art museum um, uh, through the Montana Museum of Art and Culture. Uh, you know, these are just one of the many things that they do as they're remapping, redoing things. They have they had plenty of green space land. Heck, when I remember was going there with a, a summer uh, camp program they had like giant evergreen trees right in the like the main area uh, just by uh, Adams Center and all those trees are gone um, there are multiple zones being developed and redeveloped on these sites as construction occurs many of these parkings took a hit while they built the Adams Center area uh, like I just said Adam Cook works on campus does not want the removal of natural areas and this is what he had to say I think that essentially just abandoning this to be paved over is is essentially selling selling that land for scrap um, I would I, I I feel pretty strongly that there are other uses it, hypothetical ones in the future they don't necessarily have to be proposed now but but there are other uses that would generate you know orders of magnitude more benefit in terms of ability to accommodate more students uh, ability to generate revenue for the university ability to create capital improvements uh, uh, more student housing um, more lab and teaching space anything like that those are all hypothetical things in the future that are that are going to be very difficult to claw back yeah 
And you know, one of the reasons why they wanted to uh, even put a new residence hall and do this kind of stuff is the big picture is to mitigate uh, deter parking as he calls upon the city to meet goals for a greener community. He also wants to make it easy for students to live within walking distance rather than some of the off-campus living that gets more expensive the closer you are to the university while people who live on campus pay the uh, dorm rates, um, which aren't that great personally on it. But we're not talking about that. The next topic is green energy deal with the city as they look to create an interlocal agreement with Northwest Energy to go green. Amber Sherrill, uh, City Council, talks a little bit more about this. You know, it will be the single largest thing to get us through our, to our clean energy goals. It will be a great opportunity for people in Missoula, both corporations, um, uh, large, large energy users, including the city itself, um, to to have be on renewable energy. So I, for one, I know we've been working on this for a very long time. I'm so so. <laughs> there there have been people that said we'd never get to this point, um, and we're here. And so we still have a number of other steps that we need to go through. But I, for one, am. Just very excited that we are going to have this opportunity to make a real shift in our community. All right, and Daniel Carlino with the City Council. Oh, actually, um, he mentioned that uh, it's not enough, and in a lot of ways, the uh, um, Northwest Energy is uh, going backwards in many ways on green energy, and some of those against this are concerned about the ongoing need for power over the winter, and green energy, light, solar, and wind are not reliable to the extent of how big the infrastructure is for a current power grid, uh, but with a growing state, demand for power will also grow. So uh, Mike Nugent, City Council, uh, responds to those uh, fossil fuel claims from city. You know, we, we talk all the time about the, count, the powers that cities have, and one of the things we don't have is to eliminate fossil fuels or any of those things. Those are options, people have them, that is not something the city's doing. But I think a project like this can maybe show the rest of the state that we can take step forwards in Montana, like so many of our neighbors in the West who are actually doing a good job leading on this issue. So I think this is a perfect opportunity to do something that very much aligns with the values of the majority of voters in our community. Um, and I will happily support it, and I hope we can do more. Yep. And as soon as they make uh, affordable electric, uh, electric cars, there are uh, options for that to transition forward because that's the reason why people transition from horses is when they have the uh, uh, advantage of having cheaper vehicles like cars to be able to transport everything and not have to deal with the uh, um, the maintenance of raising a horse essentially for uh, transportation. And the city vowed to uh, favor this opt-in item to support green energy. And so far, this is not only just about North Eastern Energy but the city and the city of Missoula, but the private-public partnerships that the city wants to create in um, moving this uh, zero by 30, 2030, in which they hope to have um, a lot of things moving forward to, to curb, uh, curb fossil fuel uses by encouraging more uh, green energy um, productivity. So anyways, we're gonna move on. We're gonna talk a little bit more about public safety and health. Public safety and health is a meeting that they usually talk about, you know, this and that, and roads and uh, social uh, issues and stuff like that. And but for this particular one, they're going to be talking about the fire department, in which police, fire, uh, first responders, all that kind of stuff. Um, Danny Beck, fire department, talks about their dog, Jack. And so we'll have a little bit of a, a um, puff piece before we get into the uh, annual report for 2023. Jack's nine years old. Uh, he's been coming to work with me on and off uh, for the last nine years. And over that period of time, I've noticed uh, how much he can affect uh, our crew in a positive way, um, making them smile, reducing stress. Specifically, um, I, I've had comments made to me that they really appreciate seeing Jack uh, after we come back from a traumatic call uh, where we just need a little bit of his distraction and Jack's waiting at the door with the toy in his mouth wiggling his butt um, and it kind of gives a sense of normalcy or kind of more of that home feeling also um, and uh, it doesn't fix necessarily what we just saw but it definitely can kind of create some levity uh, all right and so this is actually part of a program that the uh, fire department is launching and jack is a technically uh, the first in the state to be registered for this special service um, just you know 
more, more than just bring your pet to work day. This is uh, more about mental health for firefighters who deal with the aftermath of situations that most of us normies don't really see. Um, Gordy Hughes, fire chief, talks about the current stations and locations. And so just a little bit of retrospect of uh, where you can find your fire, uh, fire, um, firehouse, fire stations and stuff like that. Uh, everybody knows, hopefully at this point, that we have five stations in the city of Missoula. Hopefully um, we are shooting for a, a station six with uh, the potential of a uh, positive vote within the levy this June. Those stations are strategically located around the city that provides us the ultimate response with um, the, the goal of reaching each of our emergencies within six minutes or less. 2023's call volume numbers, uh, the 12,733 calls indicated here uh, represent all calls for the fire department, which would include the big red trucks and the mobile support team responses. Many of their calls, they are essentially the uh, first responders to many scenes regardless. Uh, it's very rare for a 911 call to not have a fire presence there. And so far the fire department fielded over 12,000 calls. That's roughly 15% of Missoula's population. One of the things brought up about this presentation is the response time to calls, which are all recorded. And Gordy wants a faster responder response time, six minutes or less, but sometimes has to deal with multiple units going out at any given time. And this is his uh, take on this. In a perfect world, those would be medical emergencies because they only require a one engine response along with the um, services of transport, with the ambulance. But rarely are we just seeing, I mean, I know 68% of our call volume is EMS related, but EMS calls also include car accidents with medical injuries attached to those car accidents. Those require the response of two of our fire engines. So if you have two engines out responding to a car accident and another medical call that comes in the same time, or perhaps another vehicle accident, we're wiping out our stations, taking four response units off the street. And then one of the big takeaways from this particular meeting is that it does definitely seem that um, in terms of like population to emergency calls and the growth, not to mention the mobile support team taking a lot of the time as well. Um, um, he, uh, Gordy also mentions how the uh, mobile support team is something that is more than just, you know, you check in a situation, you help out as best you can, and then you move on to the next thing. These kind of mobile support teams have a tendency to uh, be, go on, and the average time spent per client uh, tends to be about an hour. They're very time intensive calls, as you can see, 59 minutes on average. Uh, that's resource um, time suck, but it is relevant to that type of call these calls cannot be expedited to um, take somebody to jail or, or to the emergency room when those aren't the best options for people that are in behavioral crisis. Um, they need wraparound service, they need care, and it takes time on those calls. And um, quite frankly, the two units that we have staffed uh, day to day from 10 o'clock to eight at night, we could certainly run that unit 24 seven, pick up more uh, calls and relieve the time spent by PD and our firefighters on scene um, by running an, uh, even a third unit on those calls. Um, they are stacked up day in and day out with their call volume, um, constantly responding from one call to the next to try to and then uh, another thing on top of Gordy's comments was uh, the fact that when they were talking about these updated presentations, because Mobile Support Team works with the Partnership Healthcare, uh, they bid with them, and um, they, the, one of the bigger things that they do with the Mobile Support Team is that there's the major follow-up. So if there is a mental health crisis or any kind of crisis that doesn't require medical intervention or uh, um, legal in intervention, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, would essentially be used for, um, um, you know, helping the person where they're at 
uh, rather than ha taking them somewhere to be helped later on down the road. And so I, do w I wanted to mention overall this fire department has six different departments that serves within the city, you know, engine medical removal and various uses for first responders. Hell, even river rescue is part of their vast number of uses because they go on pretty much every 911 call. Uh, as we move on, climate conservation parks, a corner farm open space project uh, acquisition is uh, going to be utilizing some of the open space bond money. About three hundred and ten thousand dollars of that money will be going towards a fee tile title acquisition of corner farm by Trust Montana, consisting of eight acres of agricultural land. This is on the corner of Tower and Third Street West. So eight acres for uh, three hundred and ten thousand dollars for protecting egg land. Zach Covington, Park and Open Space uh, Planning and Development, talks about providing affordable farmland within the city of Missoula. The project uh, addresses social equity mostly through being able to, pro to provide affordable uh, farmland for farmers, and particularly younger farmers. It's very difficult, as you know, to be able to afford any kind of farmland in any developed community, but in Missoula in particular, it's very expensive land. It's oftentimes the most developable land. It's flat, it's got water, it's close to development and infrastructure. <clears throat> so this, this uh, helps provide access to the farmland, uh, inexpensive, inexpensive access, excuse me, for farmers. And you know, I was thinking about this a little bit uh, as we were looking through this. It definitely feels like it's a, uh, a peas farm kind of situation. Um, with, this, with the city, with their fingerprints on this, green non-GMO type grows would be uh, counter to the natural environment. And so the owner slash uh, stewards of the land would be Trust Montana. It's like it is creating a new bean farm from open space money to protect egg land for future use, not to mention keep it affordable for people who actually want to cultivate the land. And the, the stewards, owners, the ones who would be essentially renting out the farm would be uh, Trust Montana's uh, Don Co uh, Conklin, who uh, talks a little bit more about this and their presence there. So this is an exciting, dynamic project, and we are inviting you to join us to be our partners. We believe in partnerships that leverage resources and expand our capacity to achieve our vision. We think this partnership will help you achieve your goals as well. Together, we will work towards the preservation of a farm, helping to keep Missoula the garden city. All right, and so that was Don uh, Gonkland. And, um, you know, fun fact, this type of land would be uh, a first for state of Montana to protect farmland and other affordable use for wannabe farmers. Uh, 50,000 acres from uh, 1980 to 220, 2023 in the city of Missoula have been converted from egg land and $310,000 for acres of land is pretty much a steal if you actually look up uh, uh, prices on Zillow and how people are selling acreage of land, a, a single acre of land for like $1.2 million, it's insane. Another item includes the incentive uh, program for developers to opt in to get more income restricted housing and more, the community sparking investment in transformative energy or uh, C site grant application would be used to leverage developers to get deals for improving building weatherization, the uh, efficiency of appliances, electrification of uh, energy use, powering the energy use of the renewable resources, improving air filtration, and investing in climate adapted uh, landscaping that can support resilience to extreme weather. So this is actually kind of a good thing for a lot of contractors to uh, dip into because they can get grant, grant applications. They can even use this as a selling point for uh, homes to um, improve and weatherize and be like, hey, you know, we're going to do some construction here, but we can also apply for a grant to help improve, you know, energy efficiency of your home. Uh, we're essentially getting paid. We can, uh, you're, you're basically paying just for most of our labor, but a lot of the sites with installations would be considered that. So I, it's, it's, I'm not trying to sell you on this. Actually, I'm mostly trying to sell the sellers on this because this is a little bit more information on that. I actually had a run in with a guy the other day who basically, um, was able to create a whole uh, Wi-Fi high-speed internet system for a uh, rich guy, and uh, he did it for $60,000. And I'm thinking to myself, like, why don't you do that for like rural communities? Because part of the grants that the Build Back Better allows for connectivity. And so essentially, you just have to be the right person. And so if you're an up-and-comer startup, 
interested in creating fiber and laying down uh, modems and doing the kind of uh, engineering work uh, that are just kind of lacking in a lot of rural communities in the state of Montana, a lot of these kind of grants are great opportunities for you to uh, basically sell your services to uh, local municipalities for future um, infrastructure improvements, advancements in smaller communities that need that kind of electronic uh, connectivity as we get further and further away from uh, people in those rural communities having to commute to metropolitan areas like Missoula to get their amenities met, not to mention doctor's appointments and stuff like that since many local doctors and clinics don't really exist in rural areas. So a lot of uh, things happening for sure, a lot of money going towards a lot of these things. And there's definitely a lot of great opportunities for a lot of grants and building this kind of stuff for sure. But um, when it comes to sustaining it, that's something that is n never really asked, but uh, well, I'm not going to get into it because now I'm going on a tangent. So without further ado, I'm going to throw it over to some of the MCAT programming. And uh, one of the, so one of the, some of the program that we're going to be showing is some of the history, some of the things, and the uh, current state of the city of Missoula through uh, City Club's State of the Missoula Address. Those of you that know me, uh, know that you're not going to get out of, out of a conversation with me about the university without hearing the two words that summarize everything that we do here. And those two words are inclusive prosperity. You know, boiled down to its essence, our university's mission is very simple. It's to enable every single member of our community, regardless of where you come from, who your parents were, what your politics are, what high school you went to, how much money you have, everybody. It's our job to make sure that everyone can reach their unique full potential. And we do that in a number of ways. We'll also work incredibly hard to benefit our community and this entire state through economic activity, job creation, research, specific job training. That's who we are at UM. So Basin, Montana became the Montana Artist Refuge. Uh, and there were, it was basically founded by lesbian artists who some of them went to Portland and then it's like, well, no, we can make this in Basin. And it became a, a center for art and culture. Um, and there's still some women there. MJ Williams is one of them who's an amazing horn player. I mean, really amazing musician, um, but kind of known as an art center. Um, Alex Sweeney, too, um, was a poet who lived there. So that was a movement that was happening. We know. Um, you know, kind of in the more recent history, again, um, there are women like Diane Sands, who was a, a lesbian legislator. Her partner was also a legislator, but not out when she was a legislator. Diane. When the flood was here, when, when Glacial Lake Missoula was here, water was 2,000 feet deep here at the maximum. And when it drained, it went out through Hellgate Canyon. Uh, again, you have a corner there. The fastest water was on the outside edge. The Mount Sentinel side is all rocky. Any loose rocks were picked up and carried away. The Mount Jumbo side is soft and smooth and has still a lot of soft rocks on it and a smooth slope, where that's a, a jagged slope from the aggressive force of the water as it went around the corner. If you haven't gotten a chance to uh, see, uh, MCAT has been uploading a lot of old archive videos from MCAT's past of over 30 years. We have 10,000 uh, old programs, um, but or also be, uh, so far we have over 1,000 programs uploaded from our old archives, and we will continue doing it well into uh, the next year or two before just to get them up, uh, up on there. All right, sorry, I'm losing my grammar. Let's, gonna, let's jump right in to Pre-Critic, where I prejudge movies, uh, whether they need it or not, uh, based on my uh, love of movies and also my uh, overprotectiveness of movies. Uh, here is Pre-Critic. This one is called uh, IF, otherwise known uh, acronym for imaginary friends. So, you know, when you have something that's fantastical or mythical and all that kind of stuff, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta corporatize the baby. You gotta make it a corporate thing. And so this is what this movie is all about, is essentially creating a foster care for imaginary friends. So, hey, you know, it's the eBay of imaginary friends. They basically rip off uh, old Cartoon Network show, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. 
then would have, uh, you know, uh, so, you know, my friends, they, they like Fosters. They liked it. They talked about it all the time. You know, you, know, it, you, you get the guy from uh, the Deadpool movies who isn't swearing. Uh, this is the, for the parents who want to bring their kids to see Deadpool but think uh, they are being good parents by bringing them to this one instead. Anyways, this movie is about a foster care for imaginary friends who are abandoned by their creators and now they have to find the kids with the least imagination that suits them the most. Enjoy plenty of heartfelt moments in this film that will make you ha having pretend friends better than the real ones. Uh, then we have Back to Black, as if the last one wasn't dark enough. This one uh, is more geared towards a pop star that died at 27, making her one of the few stars that met that end. Uh, watch as we get a biopic about Amy Winehouse, but not ACDC because, you know, Back to Black, you know, it has everything to do with Amy Winehouse. But from humble beginnings to a tumultuous end to when she died from basically alcohol uh, consumption, uh, enjoy a scene where someone says, She's got to think about her whole life before she gets on stage. Yet another cash grab for a dead pop celebrity person biopic. Uh, Strangers, chapter one, not since 2008. Yes, I, I had to look this up. The original movie with Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman, people that you probably don't even remember, um, it were in the original The Strangers movie about a home invasion. It's basically, you know, it's, imagine you have a family of Jason Voorhees. They all wear their own unique mask, and then they torture and uh, uh, they torture a young couple. So enjoy a young couple visiting a small town where the people in that small town don't like strangers, and yet that's probably one of their only reasons why their economy uh, uh, actually exists still. So we have intruders who wear various masks that make you say, since when did the Friday the 13th guy get married and have kids? Uh, and so since this is a prequel, the killers will have to survive and the couple will have to die. Otherwise, this would be a false death of the killers followed by a movie where their eyes pop open just like any other horror film. Then we got a movie about a coming of age. Uh, I thought this was actually a horror movie, but then I had to look at the trailer. I'm like, oh, this is a dumb coming of age about teenagers who like horror shows and one of them disappears and then the guy has to search for whatever happened to this person and gets all twisted in mindset because he, they keep on watching. It's, it's kind of like people who, when somebody goes missing and they watch and listen to a lot of murder podcasts, it's kind of like, you're kind of delusional about this, and that's kind of what I'm getting um, the vibes from this particular film where just a young teenager who is, uh, you know, finds a girl who likes the same stuff he does, then the stuff that they both like ends, and then some weird stuff happens, and she just goes missing, and he starts getting in his own head about it. All right, and then we have this other movie. It's called Babes. Uh, not the pig in the city, but it's essentially the uh, uh, equivalent of... Uh, <laughs> I, would, I, I would Actually, I would have loved this to be the equivalent of of, um, you know, how Alien went to Aliens. I would love this to actually be Babe, but Babe, so there's ba you know, multiple pigs in the city. But anyways, enjoy these ladies in the city where uh, about, a, about a girl who is not suited to be a mother, suddenly becomes pregnant, and then learns to become a mother in the end. That's essentially what you can expect from this movie. It's, it's basically knocked up, but from this perspective of a uh, 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 terrible, or uh, just a uh, terrible at life kind of gal. I don't know. That's kind of what it's building up to. It's kind of like all the, you know, uh, missteps of what it's like for a woman who has, uh, who had no intention of getting pregnant and how they go through the motions of pregnancy through hilarious results. Um, yeah, so there's the movie. Uh, that's what's happening there. Uh, up next, we do have a new dub and stuff from uh, the movie that's called Behind Green Lights, a 1946 movie. So enjoy this. I actually enjoyed making this one. So I hope you enjoy this nice treat of dub and stuff where I redub over some movies. Did you hear that Harold runs with scissors? Harold runs with scissors? What a scoop! We gotta pr stop the presses! Stop the presses! I said for the last time, I don't run with scissors. I walk very quickly with them. I don't like this kind of slanderous reputation going around for me. You hear me? I will sue you. I see you've grown a mustache like Just me. Just because I grow a mustache doesn't mean Oh, I've like heard you. that before. I don't want you going around telling people that I have a mustache just because of you. Can you believe they're trying to run a story about me running with scissors? Hello? Well, fine. You know what? I'm going to go for a walk. And you know what? And I'm taking these scissors with me, too. I'm going to walk really fast with these and show them the truth. Ugh, thanks for showing up on such short notice. It's been very touch and go around here. Oh, I heard about poor Harold. Oh, you must be curious about the circumstances of his death. Well, I heard he was running with scissors. Well, uh, 
Not quite, actually. Well, please tell me what happened to him. It's a dreadful thing, death. You get busy living, then you get bored dying. Is that how those saying goes? Well, not quite exactly, but uh, let me tell you the uh, things that actually happened. You're going to need to sit down. Well, okay. <laughs> well, according to reports, uh, he was walking really fast down the street with some scissors, and then a piano hit him. But that didn't quite kill him. He actually died of an oak allergy from the tree that the piano was made of. It was very weird and very tragic, but, you know, his immune system didn't really take much oh, heat from God. the uh, intense pressure. The pressure being the piano crushing him to death, you know what I mean? But the allergies from the wood, heh, didn't really work out that well for him. And what am I going to write about it? How he died and everything like that? Crushed by a piano and allergied? Huh, well, of course not. I can't just write that he died in a hilarious but disturbing way. Oh, really? He was like a brother to me, a really dumb kind of uh, stupid brother. So, right, he was a beloved brother? Is that okay? Inspirational figure. He taught people through his actions and inactions how to be a good and decent person. Huh, that's really good. Maybe you should be writing this down. All right, I need a pen. Uh, well, what are you looking at me for? Uh, well, there's been a pen shortage and my boss won't buy any more pens for all of us. Huh. Oh, I got an idea. Have you heard of diffusion of responsibility? It's where you don't do anything and you wait for someone else to pick up the slack. Uh, should we vote on it? You see, that's the beauty of the situation. You don't have to do anything to do nothing. It's a win-win situation. Do you hear me? Well, what are you going to do in all this? I'm going to do what every responsible person does. Take their kids to a racetrack. And I guess I'll just sit here and think about what's going on and everything. Uh, now you're getting it. Don't tell anyone I did nothing for you. Because I didn't. The good old diffusion of responsibility uh, works every time, or doesn't, because someone will pick up the slack eventually. They always do. Anyways, let's move on. We're going to talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for your events. If you want to know what's happening in Missoula, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Here are some of the highlights of some of the things happening in Missoula. And as always, uh, Sterling Strides Mommy and Me workout classes are happening at Bonner Park. They do this uh, weekly. Um, I'm sorry. They do this daily at 9.30 a.m. at Bonner Park. You bring your strollers and uh, get a nice workout out of it. Uh, Empower Place, open hours, uh, Missoula Food Bank. Uh, they usually are open Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays from uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Thursdays and Tuesdays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. After school meals are served after 3 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. A lot of information for you guys, but the Missoula Food Bank is a uh, hands-on learning center located at the Missoula Food Bank. Uh, the Empower Place is dedicated to nourishing bodies and minds of local children and families. It's for car community center, science museum, food hub, and library. There's also something for everyone for learning at the Empower Place. Um, we also have uh, acrylic paint pour one basics. So this is like acrylic painting. This is your more traditional kind of painting, Bob Ross kind of stuff. Uh, Lifelong Learning Center acrylic paint pouring is a technique in which thinned uh, acrylic paints are poured into the surface to create colorful flowing abstract design. The simple a relative inexpensive uh, fluid art form is easy to learn, requires no previous painting experience, and this is one of the many things the Life Learning Learning Center does. Uh, instruction, most of these have class fees to pay the instructor to teach. This one is $55. Other than that, this is just uh, one of the many things the Life Learning Learning Center is to get certified, learn new things, and for people who are just have a lot of, a lot of free time and you know, don't want to necessarily break the bank going uh, back to college to become a, a, what's considered a non-traditional student. Uh, Tiny Tales, uh, this is a, a reading program here at the Missoula Public Library for kids. Um, Little Bug Story Hour, this is at the Butterfly House. Looks like they're uh, taking their uh, um, hand at doing a reading thing, but in honor of the future arrival of their own ant colony, they're reading Two Bad Ants by Chris Van Alsberg. They'll read a table of two mischievous ants, and they'll complete a wearable craft your kiddo can show off while they explore the museum. Uh, lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. This is a part of their regular things that they do on a daily basis. They also, I also wanted to mention the Pavarella Center also does uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinners uh, daily and on the weekends for folks that want to get uh, access to food. The Missoula Senior Center is a great opportunity for people who are wanting to uh, meet with other folks, get a nutritious, uh, cheap meal. 
um, and a lot of, uh, uh, and there's a professional chef that works there too. It's kind of crazy. I didn't know that until recently. Um, but also I wanted to mention Missoula Public Library does a yarns starting at noon. They, they usually have a watercolor and yarns thing at the fourth floor of the Missoula Public Library for people who want to do things. There's still uh, people taking on the mantle of continuing doing the watercoloring um, every single Friday at noon along with yarns where you can stitch and crochet. Uh, Hands-on science, forensics. Spectrum Discovery always has a new science uh, exhibit and science uh, activity at their Discovery Bench at the Spectrum. It, this is all on the second floor, uh, followed by Lego Club and after school meals at 2.30 p.m. You get to do Lego Club, but also get involved with the Missoula Food Bank, getting fresh, nutritious meals before the kickoff in the summer, starting in June, where the Missoula Food Bank will offer kids free lunch who are 18 and under. Um, 406 Pickleball Missoula Spring Fling. Uh, the Fort Missoula Pickleball Courts is hosting a tournament designed for emerging players with little to no tournament experience. Their skills below 3.5 uh, will, be, I bet it's an inside joke, I swear to God, but it will be a random Robin play of three to six matches that will be determined partner for double elimination plays will uh, follow the round Robin matches. And so this can be at Fort Missoula Pickleball Court on uh, 3 p.m. this afternoon. Beast Your Business, the Newtown Arts Community Center is doing a business intensive this weekend. Uh, they're going to do an introduction 4 to 7 p.m. to access a sneak peek of Beast Your Biz this of evening before this networking event to kick off the conference. And then the conference is going to be Saturday from 9 to 6 p.m. where they actually do 15 minutes of open question and 45 minute sessions of action pack training. Uh, with 30 minute breakouts, we'll be able to digest information and, uh, and also visit with exhibitors that will be there as well. Uh, Spruce Ellie Sally Live is going to be at playing some bluegrass music at 10 Spoon Winery starting at 6 p.m. Also at 6, Imagination Brew Company is hosting electronic music uh, featuring Dr. Fly. Uh, AR Workshop, it's a, a, a Friday do it yourself workshop. The uh, features many of the most popular items that are functional. It's at the AR Workshop Missoula. Um, this is a new place, create a unique home decor item utilized in various of uh, tools, techniques, and in-house collection of paints and non-toxic stains while guided by the crafty instructors. Uh, Toil and Trouble, and this is uh, uh, Sussex as they're rounding up their school year. Sussex School is hosting a theater. At the end of this is a re hilarious retelling of Wolf and Little Red Riding Hood take the audience through a whirlwind of fairy tales and a hilarious force full of jokes and nonstop witch action that will leave you uh, golfing like a billy goat. And so this was going on weekend, all weekend long. You can't miss it. This is one of their shows. They're also having a matinee on Sunday from what I saw as well. You can go to Missoula Events on it for more information. Clutter, disorganization, hoarding, a class to help. So virtual class, uh, you can go to organiza organizational consulting services.com. Again, organization culti uh, consulting services.com. You can also find this at missoulaevents.net for the clutter disorganization slash hoarding. It is a virtual class for folks that are worried that they might be a hoarder, but they also uh, want to stay home. Uh, Terra Fim, Terra Fim flyer at the Wilma. It's going to be some jam music at the uh, rock music starting at 7 p.m. Charlie Family Band at the Old Post starting at 7 p.m. Karaoke at uh, Jack Sloan is going to be at 7 p.m. Uh, caught in a jam. The uh, Old Beck VFW Post 209 is going to be some jam and funk. Uh, what the Constitution means to me, this is going to be Elks Lodge. This is a theater uh, recreation of the, uh, of the Montana Constitution, actually the Constitution in general. Uh, the, uh, the followful exploration of Nashville's founding document through the lens of four generations of women. And this is going to be presented to the Montana Repertory Theater and going to be showing at the Elks Lodge tonight, 7 p 30 p.m. Andrew Victor Live is going to be playing some folk music at Cranky Sand Public House. Josh uh, Jaden Decker is going to be at Benny's Frenchtown Club. The talented uh, will be taking the stage at the Frenchtown Club, but also they'll be hosting a Willie's Distillery. We'll be offering free whiskey samples. So for the uh, folks that like some whiskey, Iris Von M uh, Moxley's favorite people, a display of dragon comedy, Newtown Arts Community Center is going to be featuring Much Like Charlie uh, at 9 p.m. Um, much like Charlie is going to be, oh, actually, Zudan Arts Community Center is hosting a display of dragon comedy at 9 p.m. Much like Charlie is going to be uh, at Union Club tonight at 9 p.m. Cahoots, the Sunrise Saloon, is going to be playing some country music Friday night. And that's just Friday. Like, there's so much going on. Saturday, we're doing those markets. And those are going to be so common and everything like that. But there's always so much going on in the downtown Missoula in the morning from 8 to 1 p.m. Reclaimed Wood Bird Feeder, Lifeline Learning Center, is also doing a class where you can reclaim, re reclaim old... Uh, 
uh, old wood and basically make uh, bird feeders out of them. I'm sure you've seen them at farmers markets. Uh, Story Time is the Missoula Public Library, uh, the museum tour at 11 uh, AM at the Missoula Art Museum, Missoula Softball Association Super Draft Tournament. So those of you who are individual players who want to join a softball league, this is the time to do it. Starting at 11 AM at Fort Missoula Regional Park, you can't miss it. Moon Randolph Homestead, they're doing open hours as always, starting at 11 AM all week, all uh, summer long. Western Montana Genealogical Society Workday. This is, they do this every, uh, I believe, once or twice a month at the Missoula Public Library's fourth floor. Um, teen Open Studio at the MAM, which is Missoula Art Museum, and this is for uh, teenagers who want a snack and do some art. Also, art supplies are provided for the Missoula Art Museum. They're just trying to encourage uh, wannabe artists. Uh, also, Etching is going to be uh, doing a printmaking medium at the Missoula Art Museum start at 1 p.m. Uh, MCAT Society Drop-Ins uh, inside the library is going to start at 1, and it goes until about 3 p.m. It's a drop-in for kids who want to do some stop animation. Learn to hunt, Highlander Beer is talking about uh, gear 101. And so when you're hunting, it's more about hunter safety. Uh, it's there, this is going to expand on your basic hunter safety courses by talking about some of the supplies you might need to take into the wilderness when you're going out hunting. Um, introduction to ethical Wi-Fi hacking and self-defense. Missoula Public Library is going to host this in the makerspace at 3.30 p.m. At, uh, on Saturday. Road to Crystal Mountain Warehouse Rave. And so there's going to be a rave from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. at Three Stages Rave. This is going to be at uh, 5646 Harrier Drive, Missoula. And so, yeah, there's a lot of people coming down here to do the rave. Eddie Johnson at uh, Ten Spoon Winery is going to be playing some multi-genre music starting at 6 p.m. on Saturday. Contra Brazil is going to be at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m. Lockwood Bluegrass Music at Draftworks. Uh, Blue Collar Band at the Jack Saloon at 7 p.m. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, and then Maggot Fest Street Party. So uh, rugby is happening all week long, but they're going to have their uh, block party at Ryman. And so they're going to be doing that on Saturday night. Uh, let's see. They're also doing another drag show at Zootown Arts Community Center on Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. Um, a Spice Grill Tribute Show. Uh, jazz night Saturday with the uh, Connor Rico Trio, Stephen Hoof Speak Easy, uh, Solid State Karaoke at uh, Westside Lanes. Uh, Highway Patrol at Union Club at 9 p.m. DJ Chris Moon every Saturday at 10 p.m. And if you're interested in creating a backyard buffet on Sunday, they're doing a home resource, uh, native plants, and more in this workshop, joined by fantastic speaker Claire Shetty from Great Bear Native Plants. They'll explore how you turn your space into a buffet for birds, bees, butterflies, and more. Taylor Swift, Bestie Bash, Golden, uh, Golden Leaf Studio. Southgate Mall is hosting a Taylor Swift uh, crafts, arts and crafts kind of fair with Cookie Bakery and more. Uh, fruit bat for it's at the Wilma. It's going to be playing folk music at 7 p.m. I'm kind of racing towards the end. And that pretty much should wrap up everything. They have some comedy at the VFW at 8 p.m. as always, and rocking karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon at 8.30 p.m. And for more information, go to MissoulaEvents.net. And I want to thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.